Time to open Discord, I guess. Ah, right, let me check my mic first. Wait, what's this? I've seen this before. Apparently, you're able to play sounds while on a call. I did see it was only for Nitro users though. I'm probably not going to pay 10 bucks a month for a virtual status. Guess I'll make my own. How do soundboards actually work? What goes on behind the scenes? I found out that you have to do something called piping. This means sending audio streams somewhere else than your default input device. And in order to build a soundboard, we need a list of mp3 files which are our sounds. Then, we can just read the mp3 files as audio buffers and pipe them to our input device. And here's where the first problem came up. You see, you can't just use any input device, since most of them are already in use. The solution is to install a software called VB Cable which will create a virtual microphone for us, so we don't have to deal with any of the audio stuff. But we still have to know how to pipe the audio to our mic. So I opened Google again and searched and searched, for hours, until I came across a very simple and intuitive solution, utilizing a package called Pygame, which is, as the name gives away, meant to create games. But since most of it is written in C, it has a lot of functions that interact with the Win32 API directly. After putting myself through tens of Stack Overflow questions, I came across the solution I was looking for, and it was as simple as seven lines of code. Let's go through this piece of code line by line. First, we import everything we need from the time and pine game packages. Next, we need to initialize our audio system. You'll get an error if you try to run any of the below functions without having initialized the mixer. As parameters, we provide the name of the device, which in our case is that of the virtual input device, which is always named like this. After that, we have to load the sound we want to play by providing the path to it. Last but not least, we just need to call the play method, and so the program program doesn't crash, we need to wait until it's done playing the audio. Now that this part is figured out, let's make it an API so we can call it remotely. We can use Flask for this. Great, we have our backend ready, which means moving on to the front end. Same as in my last video, I used Nextron here, a combination of Electron and Next.js. For styling, I went with the table in CSS. I created all necessary routes, which are index.js and settings.js. And since I wanted to make this a sidebar layout type application, I needed to make the sound state into a context, so we can access sounds from anywhere in the code. And as a cherry on top, I named the app Nook. Let's test the app now. So in order to see that this all works fine, I need to open Discord's mic checker, which is a pretty sick feature. But first, let's set our input device in the settings page and then do the same in Discord. Now you just have to upload an mp3 file and play it. And that's pretty much it. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. Comment what I should do next and join my Discord server. As always, until next time.